that was loud. Okay, so welcome again. Um, Marcella was, will join us shortly. Uh, my understanding is that her dog got out. So as soon as she corrals that situation, she will be here. Um, so I guess we'll start off with Andrew. Do you want to give us an up to the, the EDI update? Hopefully yeah, everyone's sure. got a chance to check out the agenda, but your turn, um, Andrew. So I'm Andrew. I'm pretty new. Um, I've been working with Flora and a few others um, with the, we're calling it the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Team, ED for short. Um, that might be renamed. It's still up in the air. It's still pretty new. Um, we met our second time. Uh, on June 17th, uh, and we have two more meetings planned at least. Um, I kind of want to make it a regular thing. This last time, um, we kind of discussed norms for our group um, that will be discussed and returned to every meeting. Um, so it's not something that's permanent or written into stone. Um, we will try to meet regularly um, on the third Wednesday of every single month. Um, at 6 p.m. to accommodate people that work um, at the same address. And I'll put that in the chat after I'm done talking. That'll be 422 Adams Street, Southeast Albuquerque, 87108. That's one of our members. It's one of his, uh, it's his union location. So we'll be using one of his rooms. Um, this can be revisited, but um, having those regular meetings is really important to us. Uh, so we started discussing kind of next steps for what we want to do and what we want to accomplish. Uh, we saw our actions falling into um, three different main categories. I mentioned this last time, education codes and or rules, um, and then kind of bolstering up the party. Uh, we have different team members working on different things. Give my notes right now. Um, to kind of understand each of those different, what it means to us. Um, so Flora's looking at what it means to be a caucus, if that includes us, if we want to be that, if it means anything to us. Um, we're looking at creating uh, educational platforms, including Google Classroom, um, to help people get involved in the party, um, which can be used both in person and remotely. Um, we have a couple of people looking at outreach and how different ways to communicate with um, the population, including like something like um, podcasts, um, a blog specifically for um, people who are interested in getting involved, uh, things like that, um, getting onto uh, the radio was also mentioned, other different ways, going to high schools, getting going to churches, going to different kinds of groups around town, uh, and introducing who we are and what we do and why it's important to get involved. Uh, and we're also looking at getting um, anti-racism and inequality codified into rules as a county, um, and also um, so codified that in our rules, but also kind of in the mission statement, um, so it's obvious for people that are interested in the Democratic Party, that's kind of a stance that we have. Um, and the state's also kind of following along with us and all this, so it could be mimicked in other areas along the state. Looking at my notes, sorry. Our next meeting um, will be July 21st, again at 6 p.m., that's the third Wednesday. Um, and the meeting after that, assuming we don't change it, will be August 18th at 6 p.m. Um, the next agenda, um, we'll kind of start with the Q&A because we're all kind of new. So we're asking for a lot of questions that she's asking other people and coming back to, with answers. Um, we'll review the agenda and then we'll um, kind of write a mission statement for a little group. And we'll go back into doing action items and seeing kind of kind of getting an update on where people are at and what's next for us. <clears throat> Did I miss anything, Marcella or Matthew? Those are the two that I see. I think we're good. Hi, everybody. Apologies for running late. My new puppy decided to escape, but I think you covered everything, Andrew. Thank you. Pablo. Everyone is welcome to join. More people that are able to come, the better. Um, I'm still trying to figure out a way to do it 
remotely and in person. I want to make sure that if I'm going to do that, I'm going to do it right. But um, everyone's welcome to look at the agenda. It will be shared on the Democratic, the, the Bernalillo County Democratic Party Google Drive. Um, so you can access it there. I think that's all I have. Thank you. If you have any questions, let me know. If you want to get involved, let me know. Margaret, you have a question? Um, yeah, if I could just get the um, address again for that uh, meeting. Yeah, Mom, put it in the chat. Thank you. Yep. So it's the third Wednesday of every month at 6 p.m. at 422 Adams Street, Southeast Albuquerque. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Andrew, if I may. Um, in August, I will be doing a conference, so I won't be available. Um, although I can have try to get somebody there to open the office for you guys, so you guys can still be, have a meeting there. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Okay. Um, let's. Uh, I'll add that to our agenda for the next meeting, and we can just do a quick update and figure out what we need to do. Thank you, Matthew. Okay. Kathleen, do you have a question? Yeah, what is this meeting on August 3rd? I mean, oh, uh, yeah, what is, it's uh, this meet, this group or is it another auxiliary group? Marcella, you wanna take that question? Yeah. So, hi, Kathy. So, the it's EDI, so it's the Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion, um, I want to say, Task Force Caucus that we uh, have started forming, and we had our second meeting, and so that's what Andrew was giving the update on. Sweet. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that, Andrew. So, um, yeah, hopefully you guys, some of, some of you guys show up. Um, next item we got on the agenda, uh, Paul, if you would like to take it away, I will pull up the, I will share screen and show sure. you. Okay, uh, on the treasurer's report for the month of June, uh, we started the month in our checking account a little bit over 19,700. Uh, we had a pretty solid month on cash in. We had $895 coming in uh, on 18 contributions. That kind of compares to, we had $440 coming in May on 13 contributions. We had a total of, uh, $733 uh, cash out in the month, which included uh, mostly our standard monthly expenses for things like Zoom and email and website and storage. The one addition that we had is a, you'll see a $227 charge to the United States Postal Service. That's for rental of the post office box we have at the main branch on uh, Mountain and Broadway. So that covers a 12 month rental of our PO box. So it ended up with a net change of about $162 for the month. And our current balance at the end of June is 19,902. So overall a pretty good month, um, especially on the cash in side. Any, any questions? And I survived my first month as treasurer, so. <laughs> <laughs> Applause to that. Cheers to that. No drinks, but you know. <laughs> All right. Um, one final check. No questions for Paul on that? Sweet. Okay. Um, thank you very much, Paul. Sure, you're welcome. Let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> oh, it's me. It's my turn next um, okay, so one of the things that um, I wanted to highlight for this meeting was, um, and I'm going to share my screen again, we've all seen it a couple times now, is that little timeline with the arrows. Um, let's take a look here. Um, 
in just a little bit, Marcel is going to tell us a little bit about um, stuff that's coming up. But if I actually get this open, here we go. Um, you know, we're in July right now. It's got a little red box on it. In November, we have the municipal elections, um, mayor, city council districts, AP headquarters districts, and CNM districts. So that's um, that's you know that's what we're working towards right now. And uh, personally, one of the things that I'm working on is I'm going to get some templates set up for um, posters. I'm sorry, flyers and postcards. Uh, and I'm going to get those templates out to you guys and make those available in English and Spanish. And if there's another language that you guys would like, I can definitely go around and try to get something in that language. Just, you know, give me enough of a warning so that I can find somebody. But for sure, I will have that out in English and Spanish. And I will um, probably get an email out and put those up somewhere accessible for everybody. Um... But, you know, we, we, we got a couple, we got, we, I know we have a couple months, but let's not, let's not, uh, let's not get a little too comfortable. All right. <laughs> um, and actually, I just saw, before we move on to the next item, um, Rich, Rich Chicarillo, are you here? I just saw you pop in. I just admitted him, Rich. Well, well if he's muted and he won't talk to you until he gets unmuted. <laughs> That's all right. We'll wait for him. Um, but okay, I guess while we wait, uh, Marcella, do you want to go over those war chair one on one updates? No. Okay. Hi, everybody. I would be happy to. So Flora and I met with 25 war chairs. Thank you all for making time for scheduling for all of that. It has been very informative and we appreciate all of it. Um, so the main thing and that we learned is that like, what are, what do war chair, what are war chairs expected? And so Laura and I came up with three things. So one is participate. So going to meetings, scheduling time, asking questions, and then meet with your precinct chairs. And finally start planning for the upcoming municipal elections. And so because it is the odd numbers, um, you know, some wards are kind of clustering together in city council districts, which I think is a great idea to kind of host forums and, you know, things like that. So those are the three things, like just continue to participate, meet with your precinct chairs, and let's start planning for the upcoming municipal elections. Does anybody have any questions? I thought we were gonna burn more time than that, honestly. Um, so to go <laughs> to, to tag on to that, um, the thought that I was kind of going through before I interrupted myself was uh, um, <laughs> with those postcards, those flyers, the templates that I'm going to make, uh, the, the topic for those, and thank you, Claudia, for pointing that out, um, is uh, getting out the vote, right, and, um, and getting people to, you know, reminding people that we're going to be voting for things. Um, so that, so that is what those are for. And that is why I want the war chairs to have access to those. Um, Marcella, do you want to talk about the teams needed? Sorry, y'all. I'm very distracted by, uh, my new puppy, Pablito. He is, a. Uh... A handful so apologies for being distracted so we are planning we're in the process of planning um like so for example so let me start with the third thursday meeting 
we want to start by uh, resuming the third Thursday meetings. And we'll start with, you know, um, I think the meetings are usually from six to seven, something like that. Um, but what we want to do is have a social hour, you know, maybe 30 minutes before. So we need a planning team for like taking on the third Thursday meetings with the social hour. That uh, means coming up with the program and the whole third Thursday thing. So that's one of the things. Um, we're also looking for volunteers for the finance committee. And we are looking for a team lead for um, the mapping team. And I'm looking at you, Bob, because I know that you created your Ward 68 map. Um, it, it is doable on the county clerk's website. It's just, again, very, very complicated. So we are looking for a team lead who can who is willing to maybe help train, guide, so that we can have maps for all of the wards by precinct. So, that, so those are the two main ones that we're looking at right now. So Marcella, what you're talking about is the uh, ward maps I showed you that uh, I, I put together. And uh, if, if that's all we're talking about, I'm certainly willing to head that team up. Oh, yay. I was hoping you'd say that, Bob. I mean, it's oh. just for all of the pre, all of the wards. So that would yeah, be great. That's, that's fine. I'm, I'm an ex engineer. It's fun. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Marcella, I have a question. You, you said you want to resume the Thursday meetings, the third Thursday meetings, but I'm a new ward chair. I have no idea what you're talking about when you say the third Thursday ward meetings. What, what were they? So Claudia, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm actually new to the third Thursday as well. I've heard about it, but I, I have not been. So Flora was telling me that um, there's different panels or forums, topics, um, and it's just kind of can cover a whole wide range of things. So that's why we're looking for the planning team, including the team lead. If, anyone wants to jump on in for that. Don't worry, I'll reach out individually, but just keep that on your mind, everybody. <laughs> Jenny, do you wanna talk about, or does anybody remember, like familiar with the third Thursday? I could say something if you want. Usually the third Thursday is a program that's not um, right, it's not plugged in exactly to the business of the party. It's more on topics, legislative ideas. Um, there have been some on like the last time there was this, um, last year we had a community solar and then the people who had watched, who had participated in the third Thursday, many of them got together and actually helped lobby. So, um, and, and that ended up passing. So it's different topics that we might wanna back for, um, legislative efforts and also just to educate ourselves on on issues of the day yeah and they were they were heavily social <laughs> <laughs> yeah but people were saying that um that ward chairs might not know each other and and it might be a good way for everybody to the, the social aspect of it being more targeted toward uh ward and precinct communications might be helpful You will also see the candidates that will come to the third Thursday meeting. So um, as we're ramping up to uh, the city council elections, you'll, you'll see the candidates come and visit. It's, it's a gathering. Uh, the number of people that come depend on the speaker or the activity that you have. It sort of waxes and wanes in its, attend in, in its attendance. Is the plan that we'll meet in person? Yes, that's the idea. Okay, thank you. And I think that we're trying to um, <clears throat> figure out, um, I don't know, hybrid is the best term, but you know, cause people are ready to get back in person. You know, we're vaccinated, we're open, we're safe, um, but also we have to be respectful because it's not true for everybody. So. Hopefully we'll be able to figure out something like 
that it can still be Zoom and in person. That's more techie stuff, but so we're we're trying to figure everything out. Yeah. Do you have a do you have a place? In the past, we've met at union halls. So. So Chuck, I think we're going to work on that. We're still working out all of the details. And again, we're, we're looking for the planning team. So can't wait might, to see everybody. You might want to think about the UNM Wall Library. They're really good about lending out their facility. And they've got huge classroom types. You could have a meeting like this in here. Whoa, it would be awesome. I like the Always idea, parking. but I'm scared of going back to UNM. <laughs> I already graduated. I'm not trying to go back. <laughs> ask me. Ask me on. JD has a connection with Ask Me on Pennsylvania. That's been used before. You've got a lot of options. I do like the hybrid. Uh, I see that Pam, uh, my vice chair, is here, and she can't get out that much. So your folks that can't get out very much, having that hybrid is really, really important in uh, getting people involved and active. So, and staying active and connected. That's one of my personal goals is to get that, make sure we have that hybrid going. So no worries on that. Well, <laughs> I'm in charge, so maybe a little worried, but I'll get it. <laughs> um, sweet. Do we have, are we good on the third Thursdays? Um, Marcella, was that everything we needed to go over for the teams needed? Mm -hmm. Those are the two that we're focusing on right now. So the planning team for the third Thursday, and we have Bob being team lead for the mapping, um, and then everything will start to follow along. Sweet. Thank you, Bob. <clears throat> okay, so I have a couple of announcements that I've that are on the agenda. Um, and <laughs> the first one is from last month's um, agenda as well. It was the um, it says Medicare for All visibility action on July 24th. That's good. Hasn't changed. It's still on there. Um, but I know some of us were excited for the um, gallery art event on uh, August 1st. Do you see some uh, issues that are I, we can, uh, anyways, uh, it's been postponed and it's been postponed indefinitely. They are taking that back to the drawing board. And so there's no concrete date for that. Um, and Danny, let me just say, I think the plan is to still hold the event, but it's unclear when that's gonna be. I mean, when we started looking at it um, in the last couple of weeks, there are just, in my mind, a lot of issues with the financial portion of it in terms of you got two different counties, you got artists, you got checks flying around in different directions. We really need to nail that down, as well as I think there's a desire to relocate the venue. And I think that's the one piece that hasn't been nailed down yet. Cool. Thank you, Paul. So hopefully we'll get that going. Kathy, do you have a question? Yeah, can you explain what that event is, that art event? So, so the gist of it is it was kind of uh, initiated with, uh, with Sandoval County. One, one of the uh, members up there was going to host the event at her home. She was lining up artists to donate artwork, paintings, uh, statues, whatever, things of that nature. And the gist of it was whoever bought the item, a portion of the, of the money would go to the artist and a portion would go to the party. So. So, and from what I understand, and I wasn't um, at that meeting, but so Alex Pelan is the county chair for Sandoval. And so it was kind of a combination of working with artists from Sandoval County and Bernalillo County, as Paul was saying, but it kind of, as we got into more logistics, it was going to be like, oh, the artist gets a check for $25, and then Bernalillo County gets a check for the other $25, but then if it's in Sandoval, they get a check. So there were just too many moving parts, right, Paul? Kind of Exactly, yeah. It was, it was going to be very confusing to track, and then there was questions like, 
what if somebody from Bernalillo County goes up to Rio Rancho and buys a painting, but the artist was from Sandoval County? Mm -hmm. So then which party gets the money? It was all of those kinds of questions that kind of uh, caused us to really rethink the whole process. Yeah, just logistically. And because we get charged taxes and in kind. And so yeah. that whole money finance thing. So it, it's still, we're excited and we want to continue to partner with Sandoval County because Alex and his, her vice chair, Isaac, are incredible. Um, so that's still going to hopefully happen. It's just we have to get the logistics and fine print down. Right. Sweet. Thank you, guys. Um, next announcement. Um, we are in need of volunteers. Well, we're always in need of volunteers, but like right now specifically, uh, we're looking for a um, website tech person to help keep our website up to date. Um, we're looking for someone to gather and help post information on the website. Um, so, uh, someone else to prepare voter data analysis uh, for county leadership, including war chairs. And we're also looking for a graphic designer. So, you know, just keep an eye out. If you guys know anyone that's trying to volunteer, please uh, send them our way. We just got a new volunteer coordinator. So. Amanda Hernandez. Yeah, right, Danny, did we? Yep. And um, do we have her contact? Did she, did she text you back? No. She, she is not texting me back, but she's also part of the um, EDI planning committee. So, uh, and I think that she's been doing some outreach or is going to start. So Amanda Hernandez, she's incredible and amazing and very hands-on. And so, and I think we had the first volunteer call in the newsletter today. Today, right? yep. Right? Okay. Do and sweet. And our last announcement. Um, <laughs> so uh, we are revamping the website. We are revamping at the bare minimum. We're going to make things, you know, easier to get to. But um, uh, so the, I've been so looking at the statistics, uh, the war chairs are the people that access our website the most. And so um, I just wanted to take a couple minutes to, if, to open it up to anyone here. If you want to tell me, you know, what is what, what it is that you go to the website for the most, right? Because um, um, I, I want to make it easier for you guys to find what it is that you guys need. Um, you know, as war chairs, vice chairs, as, as people looking, as, you know, people just, trying to help you get organized. So, um, but if you don't want to speak up, you know, here, or if you have a lot of thoughts, um, I'm going to put my email in the chat right now. Hey, hey, uh, Danny, yes. I have a thought. Um, you know, the, I would, I uh, was looking, I go to the word, to the uh, website a lot for the um, rules, the state rules and the county rules. And um, I, it's hard for me to find them because they seem to be kind of buried. State rules and county rules, got it. Thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? I wanna Andrew? Oh, <laughs> let me get Andrew first. But I see his hand up and then I'll get to you, sorry. Andrew, go ahead. Uh, I, I wrote this in the chat just in case, but um, I, I go to the website to look at members of the party and maps of the precincts and wards. And then for, I didn't write this in the chat, but for definitions of what those things are. Uh, I'm terribly new and all this, you know, looking for the vocabulary is very important for me. Got it. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm sorry, how do you pronounce your name? Karina? Karina? It's Karina. Karina. Um, Thanks. I, yeah, I want to echo what everyone just said and sort of like a structural thing. I think a lot of this stuff uh, links to PDFs a lot of the time and they're not particularly interactive. I think it would be really helpful 
for folks that are less familiar with stuff um, to actually have interactive pages on the website itself rather than having to link to a downloadable PDF. Um, particularly for the rules, it would be really great if we could keyword search within the website um, and have a live active index that we can go through. Particularly for the, okay, got it. Thank you. Um, Cornelia? Yeah, I just, um, I go there often for the, uh, just the blue review. Um, you know, I know the, I know the, so I like to find out what's going on in the area. I think people in direct people to that, that tells us of ways that we can get together with other Democrats. I think folks are really missing being around Democrats and doing things that are fun together because of the isolation. Uh, coming up on the city election, if we could have, or I just put in a call to Charlotte Parsons, but if we could have our GOTV for the city election with Tim Keller done in segments, I found it very effective when I was calling for Melanie to say that I was ward chair of 28B to an area that I was close to people like that. So not have these broad phone banks, but have regional phone banks um, where people can relate to a neighbor calling them and helping them get to uh, places to vote that are in their area. And that was very powerful. I had probably the highest response uh, to local calls in my area that I have in all the phone banks that I've participated in. And the, our city council election, we're going to be dealing with low voter turnout and anything we can do to get the uh, the vote uh, get the vote out will be very powerful. But you know, regional regional phone banks I found were very powerful. Okay, got it. Thank you, um, Carrie. I think you were next. Hi. Um, yeah. So I know this it can be kind of tricky to do, but a calendar of events would be very nice. Even like a Google calendar. I know that's hard when it's decentralized and you're relying on everyone to put their event into the calendar, but um, right now I'm just on all these email lists and it's hard to keep track of what's happening when. Okay, got it, thank you. And Bob, I saw your comment and I see everyone agreeing with Bob, so I've got that in my notes as well, thank you. Uh, Margaret? So this is following on uh, uh, Neely's, kind of following on Neely's comment about the um, upcoming election. So I have in my ward 28C, I have two school districts. Um, six and seven. And so it would be very helpful to me if there were some way for me to know which precincts um, are in the school districts. I mean, and, and this wouldn't just be, you know, just for those two, but universally across APS, can we get a mapping of precinct to school district? Um, that would be, it would help me for sure. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry, before I go to the next person, sorry, I just want to make sure I take good notes. <laughs> uh, got it. Um, and I think I'm frozen too, so great. Um, thank you very much, Margaret. Do we have any more? And I'm going to go ahead and put my email on the chat right now so that if you have, if you know, if you guys think of anything, please send me an email. Chuck, uh, do you have yeah. something, Chuck? Yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of us have uh, splits uh, in the ward of uh, city council districts too, and county commission districts. But uh, you know, um, is there a way to uh, now with the city council districts and the uh, and county commission districts, other things like that? Uh, to see exactly what precincts are in what district. I thought that already existed, but um, when I've tried to find, apparently it doesn't. Okay. Okay. Precincts in. Okay. So I think that is going to be the mapping part of the mapping team, and that would go to figuring out which wards are in school districts. So yeah, that we'll take a look at that. 
um, Chuck, because that is part of the mapping process, right, Danny? And you're taking notes too? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Ah, oh, there he is. Rich Chicarillo. Hey. Uh -huh. hey. <laughs> How's it going, Rich? Oh, it's going, but you wouldn't believe what I just went through trying to figure out why my I couldn't talk to you guys. Well, um, hey, now that you're here, yeah, <laughs> it's your turn. Rich has a little bit of uh, – you can tell us a little bit about registering high school seniors. It's my understanding that you guys register – you and your team register a ton of them. So uh, the time is yours. Well, thank you. Um, what you need to know is we actually went through the administration at APS and got permission to register – um, high school juniors and seniors, depending on their age, in person through their government classes, which are required. So all, at least all seniors uh, are required to take a government class. So we can reach all of the seniors. And we found that there were many juniors in those classes that were also... So, uh you feed the kitties, and we'll figure out what you want to eat. Um, okay, am I still on the same? Sorry, Rich, you're good. Let's remember to keep ourselves muted if we're not the active speaker. Go ahead, Rich. <laughs> um, anyway, we found that there were many juniors who wanted to uh, uh, either register and they were old enough or pre-register, which um, the secretary of state site does allow um and so we went ahead and registered them and uh, we registered between 700 and a thousand of them last year we're going to do that again this year and i am looking uh to build my team because what it entails is going to each high school um for each government class and there can be more than one government class that meets at a different time at each school. And uh, it's kind of fun to do, and it certainly is easy. And for those of you that might be interested in doing this, uh, we will be going to all APS high schools, that's Albuquerque Public Schools high schools, and any of the charter and or private schools that will have us and we'll get you hooked up with uh, a small team and uh, get you assigned to schools. So if you know anybody that is interested in doing this, I would appreciate the help. And uh, my number is area code 505-239 seven five nine three again that's two three nine seven five nine three and and you know what? thank you rich and i'll um i'll send out an email with rich's number i'll put it in the chat right now but that way we kind of have a more formal centralized list of contacts does that sound good too that sounds great. Thanks, Rich. Thanks. Go ahead, Kathy. How do we sign up? So I'm interested in, in going to the high schools. And I'm also interested in helping with the mapping. And then there was another, I think, a committee uh, for data analysis, voter data analysis. Is, is that committee formed or you're just talking about forming that committee the voter data analysis is one of the volunteers that we're looking for well i could do that but not by myself mm -hmm. i mean i'm trying to do a data analysis of how many registered democrats voted in this last election i have gotten all and it was a very painful to extract from um the Secretary of State's website, um, all the, the votes, you know, how many people voted 
per precinct. But it doesn't have how many Democrats voted and how many Republicans voted. And I think that's very important information. Even though we know the majority were Democrats that voted in Bernalillo, not in Sandoval. But um, so I would be interested in starting that, but I don't want to do it by myself. I don't, yeah. Okay, thank you, Kathy. Um, we'll reach out. Um, Cornelia? Sorry, my husband had a rough day at work, so <laughs> I'd forgotten that I hadn't muted my, uh, my microphone. Unfortunately, you only get total votes per precinct. That's, it's been that way for a long time. You can sort of approximate how many Republicans and how many Democrats voted by looking at some of the results per candidate. Um, I don't know, Marcella, you may know, you've, you've, done, you've done precinct analysis, so you might be able to tell people how to tease that out better. Uh, so no, that, that's definitely a data guru volunteer that we're, we're looking yeah. for. That, that's definitely um, the data analysis and that I think that Flor, when Flora and I met with Carrie, we kind of mentioned it. Um, that's a whole level of analysis. Oh, hi, Chuck. Yes. All right. Uh, a couple of years ago, um, guys, I can't think of his name. Uh, he worked with Sharla um, a lot uh, on uh, resolutions. But anyway, he's a tech guru, and he did a complete breakdown of... Um, how many Democrats voted, and uh, uh, yeah, in particular elections, and did a complete analysis for target wards. Um, that was uh, that was when we had really great success uh, electing uh, Day Hawkman Vigil, who was uh, is my rep. But we never could have done that without that. Uh, uh, his work telling us who actually uh, did get out and vote and uh, how we were moving uh, more democratic and, uh, and you know, showing us those trend lines. But he had a, a really great breakdown of that uh, and the uh, why the Republicans were diminishing and it turned out it was mostly from death and moving into assisted living so <laughs> but uh, uh, and the uh, Democrats increase in numbers was in our area because of new construction new building new homes and uh, and younger voters so anyway but I, I Jeremy was that his name Schmidt Jeremy Smith, uh, he was uh, fantastic at that. And I think it was basically a one-man job uh, that for targeted wards. And uh, so I would think get in touch with him and uh, he can tell you how he got that information and, and how he uh, assembled it. Cool, thank you, Chuck. I will... Um... I, I wrote down the name. I will look into that because Patty also put another name in the chat, but I'll look into it. Thank you. Um, I didn't get to catch who was next between JD or Bob, um, but JD, if you want to go next. Okay. Uh, one thing that you're overlooking, I think, the state through the county clerk provides the Democratic Party of Bernalillo County and the rest of the counties as well. A complete database of all voters in the county, where they voted, when they voted, how they voted, anything else you want to know, they do that like twice a month. And you can take that data and just manipulate the bejeebers out of it. And I used to do that so I would know. And, yeah. 
They provide us that, and we can manipulate the hell out of it. You want well, to find I, out? I Go got ahead. a big Excel spreadsheet uh, from the Secretary of State's office, and it it has how many Democrats, how many Republicans, and how many voted um, this last election. CD for the you know the last congressional the special election. And, and how, but it doesn't have how many Democrats voted and how many Republicans voted. It just has how many. I, I understand what you're saying. What I'm trying to tell you is we get the virgin data, not the compiled data set that they're producing for public consumption. We get the detailed database data. I can tell you every individual, well, I can't do it anymore because I don't do that sort of thing anymore. But I used to be able to tell you who voted, where they voted, when they voted, how they voted. What else do you want to know? Name, phone number, address? Wow. Number okay. of people okay. in the house? That's good. So, uh, so, um, so let's, let's, uh, so Carrie, uh, I think Carrie's still on the call. So when Flora and I met with Carrie, I think that she mentioned. Yes, um, that's me. Hi, Carrie. Do you, do you, are you willing yeah, to? I'm, I'm on the database. I'm looking at the data. I, I see um, so what Kathy you, sees. I see the spreadsheets too, where it's already summarized by these different categories. But um, I still need to download the raw data with the unique identifiers, and then I can run models and see like what categories interact with each other, you know, those things. So That's I'm on it. I'm on top of it. I just okay. got back from vacation yesterday. So so a curious so don't rush. Okay, but no 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 that? let's we can continue this discussion okay. and I'm sorry to cut people off. Okay. Uh, Bob, is there something quick you want to add on to this or something different? Yeah, just real quick uh, from what I'm hearing here, there's a lot of different sources to get this data. And I was just going to say, you can tease a lot of this data at a vote builder, but, you know, if Kathy wants to take this, I'm willing to help and do what I can. Uh, I, I'm not real experienced at it, but I'll give it a shot. So, and I think Sweet. that Carrie was team lead for for the data team, right, Carrie? Okay. Or, yeah, whoever. Okay, that's fine, sure. Yeah, so I think that Carrie, and so uh, I'm... I'm so excited for all the interest in the data analysis. Mm -hmm. This is exciting stuff, guys. So uh, we have Carrie has team lead for data analysis, and we have Kathy who's interested. We have JD who's um, experienced in it. So I wrote some names down, guys. We will. <laughs> it sounds like we're going to have a lot of good data to present. So that's super cool. Super exciting. Um, yes. The thing I would add is is that uh, whoever said that is correct, Vote Builder has all of the information that you're asking for. Um, the state party has a little angst about uh, ward chairs um, having access to Vote Builder because the fee that they pay uh, to Vote, Vote Builder is based on number of uses, et cetera. Um, but there is someone in the state party office and also the Bernalillo County office, at least when I was down there full time, that can get you that information. Yeah, we do have a real good vote builder team here. So um, the sweet. problem with vote builder is that it's about six months out of date anytime you look at it. Okay. <laughs> I'm learning a lot here, <laughs> but um, I just it's um, I just wanted to tell everybody thank you all for coming. 